What's going on, party people? It's March Madness. Can you believe it? We're already at the best time of the year. It seems like to me the, the season has blown by. Um, it was a great season for me. I loved it. And now we're in the best time of the year. Thanks for watching Bardo's Breakdown. I'm your host, Stephen Bardo. Um, let me get these bills out of the way, pay some bills. If you want to join the tribe, that is the inner circle of Bartles Breakdown, you can text me to 312-847-2739. Or you can go to Bartlestribe.com and get your free copy of Triple Threat. It's uh, Stephen Bartle's Guide to Basketball Terminology. Uh, it's free, y'all. It's free money. So go uh, to Bartlestribe.com. There'll be a pop-up window. Simply put your email in there, and you'll be added to the email list. Okay? So you got two ways to join. You can join this way or you can join via text. I don't blow you up. Very respectful. Um, no spam, none of that. But good fun. We have a lot of fun inside the, uh, you know, the people who are on the email list and the people who are inside the text chain as well. Um, also, like, share, and subscribe uh, to this channel on YouTube, Bardo Media. If you find this to be quality and valuable information that, you know, you enjoy, please share with somebody that you think may want to get this information as well. Cause we, I'm, we, I'm doing this throughout the off season. Got an announcement that I'm going to start doing another podcast with a, a another uh, analyst, basketball analyst. I won't name him yet. Uh, Cause we got to work out the details, but it should be exciting. So stay tuned for that. But yes, please like share, subscribe uh, to this channel it really helps the growth. And I really appreciate it. All right, y'all. We're going to start a deep dive on the Fighting Illini. Congratulations to the Fighting Illini Big Ten Tournament champs. Man, was that a run. I tell you what, um, I learned a lot about this team. I saw some things um, that was encouraging. And, you know, we'll get into their draw, their seating in the NCAA tournament, which I thought was was favorable. Um but we'll get into that a little bit later. But first, let's talk about what happened over in uh, up in Minneapolis at the Big Ten Tournament. Terrence Shannon Jr. was outstanding. Uh, 34 points yesterday in the championship game, 40 points in the semifinal win over um, Nebraska. Yeah, getting them starting to get everything mixed up. But, yes, he was fantastic. And, guys, the stuff that he's gone through this season – that's still going on to my knowledge. I don't think that he's totally cleared of the legality in Kansas. Uh, but to have that hanging over your head, go through a six game suspension, uh, go through the, the scrutiny and the criticism that he received from people who uh, believed what was reported at first for him to overcome all that and to play the way that he did on both sides of the floor, both sides of the ball. I mean, every time Illinois needed to get to slow a play player down like Casey Tominaga, Terrence Shannon switched on him. Or when um, Chucky Hepburn started to cook a little bit for Wisconsin, Terrence Shannon was on him. Terrence Shannon was on A.J. Store, who ended up with 22 points but had to take 20 shots to get it. So this guy has been playing out of his mind with all this leaning over his head. I tell you what. I give the young man a, a ton of credit because he sh he's been showing a lot of intestinal fortitude and he's been playing like a man possessed. I loved Dane Danger getting this extended minutes. Um, we've been looking for Dane to have th this type of impact all season long, and it's been spot duty at times, but I think you're starting to see him play more consistent minutes, and it's going to be necessary in the tournament. There's foul trouble, there's injury, there's fatigue, there's matchups that require you to have everybody all hands on deck. And I think that's Dane Danger gave them great minutes, uh, 9.7 rebounds in 23 minutes in the championship game. He was outstanding. So big ups to the fight in Illini. Big Ten champions. Uh, got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? All right, here we go. NCAA tournament for Big Ten teams. Now, kind of went through the six Big Ten teams, and I went through the matchups on five of them. I didn't 
go through the matchup, uh, the first round matchup that Purdue is going to have because we don't know who that's going to be. They they play one of the winners of the the four playing games, and so I did five. I, I gave you scouting the opponents of five of the Big Ten teams, not Purdue because again we don't know who they're going to play. All right, so Northwestern is the number nine seed out of the East. They're going to face Florida Atlantic. Now, this is what this is the path that I think is going to happen. I think Northwestern is going to beat Florida Atlantic in the first round matchup. In the second round matchup, I just don't see them beat North Carolina. North Carolina, number one seed. I know they didn't. They they lost in the ACC championship to NC State, who was on a magical run. They just came up short in that one. But uh, R.J. Davis is uh, one of the top guards in the country. Uh, Amando Baycott has been a, you know, he's an old man in college basketball. He's been around. They've got all the weapons. I don't see Northwestern being able to beat North Carolina in a second round matchup. So let's look at Florida Atlantic. Um, everybody remembers them from la- from their final four run last year uh, to the championship game, I believe last year. Um, no, that's not right. To the final four. They're number 16 offensive efficiency. So they can really, really score. Uh, John L. Davis, uh, Martin, and Golden are all big-time players, right? These guys have played on the biggest stages, and um, they shoot 56% from two, so they are really effective inside the three-point line. Their defensive, defensive efficiency is not any, even in the top 100, so that's where I think is going to get them in trouble against Northwestern. They're seven and three in their last 10 games, and they lost in the conference tourney semis to Temple. So this is a quality opponent, but I think that uh, Northwestern can beat them based on Northwestern's defensive ability and the fact that they don't play very good defense and Boo Booey will be the best player on the floor. I know that John L. Davis, uh, Elijah Martin, that's his first name, and I believe it's uh, Zach Golden is the seven-footer. He's talented. He's a talented guy, but I still think Boo Booey will be the best player on the floor, and I like Northwestern in that matchup. But I don't think that Northwestern can beat North Carolina in a second-round matchup, okay? So that's Northwestern, the number nine seed in the East. Next up, Michigan State, the number nine seed in the West. I think they're going to beat a tough Mississippi State team, but I do not see them beating Iowa State, and you guys will understand why here in a minute. So let's scout Mississippi State. This is going to be a tough game because anytime you, you've got a 8-9 matchup, Michigan State would be, would have to upset the 8 seed Mississippi State. But you guys understand, 8-9 seeds, they can go either way. All right? So this is a big physical team. Um, who are their guys up front that I was going to mention? Um, James Bell, senior. Is 280 pounds. Um, Toulouse Smith is a m- might be a pro. He's 6'11, 245. Then they got a, a, a 6'10, 235, 6'7, 230. I mean, these guys are huge, right? And defensive efficiency, they're top 20 in the country. They're very good on the defensive side. You see that they're they're six in the country defending the three. They only give up 29.4% of opponents three point shots. So they're very good on the three Josh Hubbard, their point guard and Toulouse Smith are very good tandem, the point guard and the big inside. And they've had some, they haven't been very consistent. They're only five and five in the last 10 games, but I think that Michigan state with their ability to to space them out a little bit off the bounce, Jay Nakins, AJ Hogarth and Tyson Walker give you three guys that can put it on the deck and get to the rim. Trey Holloman, play very well in Minneapolis as well. So that's four guys that can go get their own shot. And I just think that their ability to get off the bounce uh, will will favor them in this contest. And I think that Michigan State can control tempo in this game as well. Uh, But it's going to be a fan. This will be one of the better first round games in the NCAA tournament. But I do like Michigan State in that one. Okay. But I don't think I don't like Michigan State. Iowa State matchup in the second round. I don't think Michigan State can win that one. All right. Next up, let's go Nebraska, number eight seed in the South. I like them beating Texas A&M 
but I don't I don't see Nebraska being able to beat Houston, uh, one of the number one seeds in the South region. All right. So now this is going to be a fantastic game because Texas A and M, their backcourt might be the top backcourt in the in the country. Um, Wade Taylor and Tyrese Radford can play with anybody in the country, guys. Wade Taylor was the preseason SEC player of the year. And Tyrese Radford might be a pro. Lefty, 6'2", 6'3". I mean, Crafty can go get his own bucket. These guys are really good. (laughs) They're going to give Nebraska fits because they can get after it, right? And they're the number one offensive rebounding team in the country. So the fact that Nebraska's played Illinois and Purdue, two of the better rebounding teams in the country, Nebraska can, uh, you know, with Jawan Gary, uh, Rink Mast, um, Josiah Alec up front. I think Nebraska has enough to compete on the glass with Texas A&M. Um, but Texas A&M is 183rd in the country at guarding the three. That's where I think Nebraska has the advantage. That's why I like uh, the Huskers in their first round matchup against Texas A&M. But I don't, I don't see Nebraska being able to deal with the firepower and the defensive, uh, the way that Houston wreaks havoc defensively on teams. I don't think, I don't like Nebraska in that matchup. But I do like them beating Texas A&M in the first round matchup. All right, moving on. Next team, Wisconsin, number five seed in the South, playing the best basketball of the season. Uh, I think they beat a good James Madison team. A team that is, uh, well, we'll get to that in a second. I like Wisconsin to beat Duke in a second round matchup, and then I, uh, I don't, I don't like the matchup with Wisconsin versus Houston. I think Houston's overall quickness, athleticism, and physicality, I think, will, will overwhelm uh, Wisconsin in a Sweet 16 matchup. But I do have Wisconsin getting to the Sweet 16 because I like the matchup in the first two games with James Madison, who is the hottest team in the country right now, winners of 13 straight. But I like I like the matchup, and, and here, here's why. So James Madison talked about they have the longest winning streak in the nation at 13, so they're rolling. They're playing well. Terrence Edwards is a dog. He's, he's a big wing that gave Michigan State in the first game. If you guys remember, the first game of the season, James Madison went into the Breslin Center and beat Michigan State. And Terrence Edwards was is a dog, big, physical wing. Could get down here with the best of them. Is a bona fide score. All right. Second nationally in two point percentage defense. Are is James Madison? So they're really, really good, and they force a lot of steals. Twelve percent of of their opponents' possessions end up in a steal. So this is a very good defensive team. But they don't have anybody to match up with A.J. Store. And I think Stephen Crow may have a big game this time because the front line of James Madison is thin. Uh, they're a little bit undersized. They're aggressive um, with uh, Bickerstaff. Is, the, is kind of the lone guy that has some size up front. Um, J.B. Bickerstaff's grandson. But that's about it. And Michigan State wasn't able to take advantage of that because uh, Jackson Kohler was injured. Uh, Sissoko and Cooper are limited offensively and Xavier Booker wasn't ready at that time. And so you've got a team in James Madison that perimeter defense are pretty good. But I think of in the front line with Tyler Wall, Stephen Crow, I think they have a sizable advantage against James Madison. That's why I like them uh, to beat James Madison in the first round matchup. All right, next up. Illinois, number three seed in the East. I liked them to beat Moorhead State. I liked them to beat a very good BYU team. That that would be that that would be one of the more entertaining games in the in the tournament if they do meet up. If Illinois, I think Illinois will beat Moorhead State. BYU, if you guys remember, they went into uh, Allen Fieldhouse and and put a put something on Kansas, and Kansas was banged up. But BYU is a quality Big 12 opponent, but I still like Illinois in that matchup. But I don't like Illinois in the Sweet 16 against Iowa State. I think Iowa State is a buzzsaw. I got Iowa State going to the Final Four. I think I got Iowa State in the championship game, as a matter of fact. Um, 
but I I don't think Illinois Illinois doesn't handle pressure well, and Iowa State's one of the best teams in the country at pressuring teams. Uh, so I I don't like that matchup for Illinois if those teams do meet in the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, Iowa State has the number one defense in the country. They force turnovers twenty five percent. That's that's one in four possessions of their opponents end in a turnover. They're second in the country in forcing turnovers. They're first in effective field goal percentage defense. They so they're they're number one in the country at that, right? Let me see some of the other superlatives. They they hold opponents to thirty one and a half percent from the three, forty six point nine percent from the two, and yep. So they're a defensive juggernaut. They're, offensively, they're they're okay. Sometimes they they struggle to score, but they defend so well that it's uh, it's tough, really really tough to beat them. Okay, so. They beat Houston in the Big 12 championship game 69 to 41. That's Houston. They beat a number one seed by 28 points. They beat Baylor by 14. Then they beat Kansas State by 19. I mean, they're they're pounding teams, right? So <clears throat> that's why. I have I, I I don't think Illinois can match up with them in the Sweet 16. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think so. All right, Moorhead State, eighth best scoring defense in the nation. They only allow 60, 62.8 points per game on their opponents. They shoot the three a lot, 26 three attempts, and they make nine and a half of them. So if I'm if I'm right, I think Nebraska was the number one three point shooting team in the Big Ten. And they made about they made about around the same number, nine or ten a game. So this is a very good shooting team. They love to shoot the three. And Riley Minix is a beast up front. He's an OVC player of the year, Ohio Valley Conference player of the year. 20, almost 21 points per game and 9.8. Almost so he's almost a 2010 guy. This guy can really play. He was an NAIA transfer and he came to the OVC and tore it up. And they have four players that average double figures. So it's a quality opponent in the first round, but I like Illinois' ability to get downhill, to put pressure on their front line, and to uh, make it difficult for them um, on the offensive end. So we'll see how Illinois defends the three, but I like them against Moorhead State. All right, the best, say, top team for last, Purdue number one seed in the Midwest. They'll play win the playing game. I think they're going to play TCU in the second round. That'll be a physical matchup. I like them. I've got McNeese State, guys. I'll share my screen with you here in a second and show you my picks. But I've got McNeese State upsetting that side of the bracket, man. I've got McNeese State beating Gonzaga, and I've got Sanford, number 13 seed, beating Kansas in the first round. So that's why you see McNeese State in the Sweet 16. I like them to beat McNeese State. I like them to beat Tennessee. <clears throat> mm. Ooh, I needed that. Excuse me. Um, I have Marquette getting to the Final Four. I like them beating uh, Marquette in the Final Four, and I like Purdue beating Iowa State in the cha- in the uh, national championship game. I got Purdue as the national champions. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about that, but that's who I have. All right. So my Final Four picks. Number two seed out of the East, Iowa State. Number one seed out of the West West Regional is North Carolina. Number two seed from of the South, Marquette. And number one seed, Purdue out of the Midwest. Those are my final four picks. And I've got Purdue beating Iowa State in the national championship game. So the Purdue Boilermakers are my national champions. I think they do a similar run that Virginia did. And I think they overcome the demons. I like the setup and what uh, I like their path. I think they've got, um, in my estimation, they probably have the easiest. Um, so you've got a number two Tennessee. Tennessee's rough now. They're they're good, but I like I like Purdue matching up against them. Um, Creighton doesn't put a lot of fear in me. I've got, 
I've got Creighton getting to the Sweet 16 as a number three seed, but then I've got Tennessee beating them to advance to the Elite Eight. Uh, number six, South Carolina. They had a really good season, but they struggled to score. I've got the Pac-12 winner, Oregon, upsetting them in the in the first round. So that's my kind of – the Midwest has a bunch of upsets, uh, but not at the top. All right? So – I like Purdue to win the national championship. Here are my assignment. So believe it or not, guys, I got the first and second round of the NCAA tournament on Westwood one with Kevin Kugler. Can you believe that? The dude that I love to call games with the most, my friend, uh, I'm with Kevin Kugler. I'm getting paid to call games with my, with my main man. Oh God. I, I, I've got such a great job. So, the teams that I'm covering, the games I'm covering, BYU versus Duquesne, Illinois versus Moorhead State, Washington State versus Drake, and Iowa State versus South Dakota State. So I'm really geeked about the, these assignments. Really looking forward. I leave tomorrow. We Wednesday is a day of full interviews, so we interview all eight teams. That's an exhausting day. Uh, Thursday, we got four games. Friday, we'll interview the four teams that will be playing on Saturday and then two games on Saturday, and then my season's over with. Um, so those are my assignments, and, and that's kind of what I'm looking at, all right? So let me run back again, guys. Let me pay some bills. Remember, you can join the tribe, the inner circle that is the tribe. You can text 312-847-2739, or you can, and you can do both if you'd like, Get your free copy of Triple Threat, Stephen Bardo's Guide to uh, Basketball Technology. Go to bardostribe.com. That's B-A-R-D-O-S tribe.com and get your free copy today. It's free money, y'all. You know how I am when I see players miss free throws and stuff. Like, man, you're leaving free money on the table. Go get that free money. All right? And then please like, share, and subscribe to this channel on YouTube. It really helps the growth of the channel. And, and I think those that have joined this season get a lot of value from this so if you know people that you think would really enjoy this type of information appreciate please share it with them as well and i thank you all who are on the youtube that tune into the show i really appreciate your support all right let's go to some questions hmm. my science is draining big time here uh let's see all right one top three c loses in the first round just as much as it doesn't happen which Top three seed, do you think it's most likely to get upset in the first round? Really want ISU, but ain't happening. ISU, good. Okay. What's up, flying out, line out fly? Simeon Fuller. I usually agree with you, but I disagree on the line out versus Iowa State. Okay. That's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Um, yes, sir. He is phenomenal. The easiest NCAA tourney draw you can ask for prior to the season if you had told me big 10 tourney champion number three seed and byu duquesne moorhead state before sweet 16 sign me up it does appear favorable i would agree with that t scott i would agree oh yeah during the show if you're on, on facebook send me some uh digital stars man it helps every little bit helps so i appreciate it uh let me get through these hello Thank you, whoever said that. Uh, what's up? Let's do the bracket. Uh, what's going on, Steve? Good to see you, M. Brots. How far do you are uh, MSU going? I got MSU. Uh, <clears throat> Michigan State, uh, Mississippi State will not be an easy game. Um, but no, wait a minute. I think you you talking Michigan State? Let's pull up Michigan State. Oh, I think I messed up. God darn it. I think I got North, I got Northwestern and Michigan State mixed up. Where is Northwestern? I got Northwestern losing to UConn, not North Carolina. My bad. I got Michigan State losing to North Carolina in the second round. I don't I don't have I don't think North I don't think Northwestern can beat uh UConn, nor do I think uh Michigan State can beat uh North Carolina, those those two number ones are very very strong, and I don't I don't see them winning that game. I messed up there. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. 
Um, my favorite time of year. What's up, Jeff? Good to see you, my man. Mine too, partner. I th- Tommy, I like their draw as well. And, you know, we'll get into it more as I go through the questions. Yes, sir. What's up, Kevin? Uh, Kevin McDuffie, good to see you. Keith Arvitz, Arvidson, I-L-L, I-N-I, good to see you. Uh, yes, Justin, I think it has gone up. He's been playing like his life is on the line, and it is great to see. Yes, it is. Uh, TM, Illinois will likely go up against BYU on Saturday. BYU sh- shoots the three pretty good. What are your thoughts about that matchup? I like the Illini in that matchup. I like Illinois to beat BYU. I think they – I don't I don't think that – I don't think that BYU's backcourt will match up very well with the, the positional size that Illinois has. I think Terrence Shannon is going to wear, the, wear them down. I think Marcus Damask will wear them down. I think Ty Rogers has figured out where he's most effective. Um, and, and so I, I like Illinois in that matchup. Uh, let's see. Just me scratching. Does T, TJ have another year? If so he can't be in the draft in Brats. Mm. No, he can leave. Just. I don't think he has another year, but I, I he can he can go. Roberto Garcia, it was a beautiful run, but don't you think they took too many three point shots? I'd like to see more plays where they post up. Roberto, um, their head coach Brad Underwood is a fan of analytics, and he's been on record for saying he'd love to sh- see the team take at least thirty threes a game. Uh, and so, I understand what you're saying in terms of post up because. Maybe you think that's a higher percentage look, and sometimes it is. Um, I, I'd like to see a little bit better balance, but with Terrence Shannon Jr. lately going to the rim, they're getting quality rim looks. They're getting paint touches. They're getting shots at the at the basket. Marcus Domas gets in the post off the bounce and gets in there to get post shots as well. So Illinois doesn't necessarily do it a, the traditional way of throwing to a big or throwing to somebody, letting them go one-on-one, but they do get quality paint touches um they just do it through booty ball and, and some different things uh that they play kaylin creedle i've seen this kaylin where a lot of people think michigan state is overseeded but guys if you know the formula of the net and you know what they take into consideration non your non-conference schedule is they rate that highly and michigan state played the toughest non-conference schedule as anybody in the country, as they normally do. So if you look at the metrics, their strength of schedule really bol- bolstered their resume. So I think that's that's why they got a number nine seed. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people say that, but I think that that, you know, for Kevin Palga is, is one of the analytics guys. He's one of the better analytics guys in the country, and he works for Michigan State. So they know how to, work the formula so that, pardon me, they're always seated favorably based on the formulas that the NCAA uses to make these decisions. And Michigan State is always well positioned because of Kevin Pauga understanding what it takes. Dane and Ty Rogers have been playing well lately. Just need Goody and Harmon to step up a little more. Yes, Soda. So to Pete Kino, good to see you. Um, they have been playing well. Luke Goody played well against um, Nebraska. I thought he shot the ball well. He had, he had some big threes. And uh, Justin Harmon, Justin's struggling with his shot. If he can just get downhill and play defense and get on the glass, I'm good with it. Yep. I saw that, Kalen. My bad. Um. Okay, you got FAU beating uh, Northwestern. Uh, they can score now, but the thing is, you guys got to remember, Northwestern's calling court is defense. They they can D up. Northwestern can D with the best of them. So that's why I like that. I, I like Northwestern's defense against Florida Atlantic's offense. And on the other side, Florida Atlantic is a – they're not even a top 100 defensive team. Who's going to guard Boo Booey? I, I like Northwestern in that one. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, I've seen BYU play a lot because I support anyone that has played at Kentucky or Illinois. Mark Pope is a good coach. He's a very good coach. They rely heavily on the three. Most games I've seen, they start out cold and then they get on fire. Yeah, well, the thing is, um, you know, that's going to be something that Illinois, if they can get past Warhead State, um, that's the benefit of playing Nebraska, um, Iowa, Minnesota, all these teams that really shoot the three uh, at a high clip, at a high percentage. Illinois has played teams like that. Now, BYU may be better at it. I doubt they're better at the three than Nebraska is because Nebraska is one of the better three-point shooting teams in the country. Uh, let me find Nebraska on Ken Palm and see who they are. Well, let's look at BYU and see um, – BYU's a number 11 in the country offensive efficiency. Um, they shoot the three at 30. They're not even top. They're 132nd in three-point percentage by team, but they're number eight in the country. They shoot 58% from the two from inside the three. So they're um they're pretty good. Um inside the three-point line as well. So I feel you on that, and I think that uh, Illinois has played enough. Penn State likes to shoot the three as well, so Illinois has had four teams that they've been able to play within um, Big Ten play that love to shoot the three. Um, okay, Imani Williams, here she comes again. Uh, Imani, you say the same thing every show. You, you talk about Michigan State. Um, then you talk about Booker. Okay, we'll, we'll keep it moving. Yep, UConn, I got it wrong. Yep, but I didn't get this wrong. I don't think Michigan State or Northwestern are going to win their second-round matchups. I know that. Um <laughs> Let's see. McNeese State will be a problem. That's why I have them winning. I've got them. Uh, where is McNeese State? I've got McNeese State beating Gonzaga in the first round. And then I've got them beating Sanford in the second round because Sanford, I have Sanford beating Kansas in the first round. Those are my upset picks. Yes, Mississippi State is very physical. And so... Um, let me make sure I got this right. Yes, Michigan State, but you guys, you know, Michigan State doesn't mind physicality. They they hang their hat on that. Um, <laughs> Carol Pope said it was a it was a holiday in her house, and the Illini winning the championship is is all she needed to see. I, good to see you, Carol. Um, is the hype real about McNeese? Yes. McNeese State has some guards that can go get it. And uh, Will Wade, who I'm not necessarily a huge fan of, but the dude can coach. And they got guys can go get their own shot. They're quick. They've got some athleticism. And they defend. And so McNeese State, it, uh, I think they're going to win their first round. I think McNeese State's going to get to the Sweet 16. Um, Let's see. Oh, fly. You don't, it's not net. You're not being negative. BYU is our number is six. Give me uh, SC or Clemson. SC or South Carolina or Clemson. I got you. Um, why do we get BYU and Baylor and Creighton get to chill out on SC and Clemson? Well, um, Nobody's going to really chill out with South Carolina because they're no joke. They're, South Carolina's one of the better defensive teams in the country, and, they, and they're physical. So they're, they're not going to take a, a break. And Clemson is physical. They love they, Clemson plays more like a Big East team than an ACC team. And um, ah, what is PJ's name? Their center is one of the best in the country. Uh, so, no, nobody's getting to chill – uh, against those teams 
And I, I understand what you're saying. You don't like that draw. That's cool. Any other fans going to Omaha? Let's paint the town orange. Oh, you know, you know, Illini is going to be, they're going to show up and show out in Omaha. Okay. He's whoever this is sees uh, two Big Ten teams getting knocked out Nebraska and Michigan State. Michigan State has problems scoring. All right. Let's see who Nebraska has first. Because I like Nebraska in their first round matchup. I like them beating Texas AM. Now they could lose because it's an eight nine matchup. But I like them beating Texas AM because Texas AM does not guard the three. And Nebraska will light them up if they don't guard the three. So that's why I like them in that first round matchup. Michigan State could, if they if they have problems scoring against Mississippi State, they could go out in the first round as well. So the, the valid points there. Did Houston get clobbered like uh, beat by 10 in the conference game here lately. Um, they got pounded by Iowa State in the con- in the championship, Big 12 championship. Uh, well, Curtis, I think um, St. John set a record this year with the highest net to not get in an at-large bid. And some people thought Providence was good enough to get in as well. And on the outside chance, Seton Hall. So those three Big, t- Big East schools, did not get in, and a lot of people were upset about that. Um, I thought Iowa State was a tournament team, um, and it's just the NCAA, uh, their calculations, in my opinion, just don't favor, they favor the Power Five schools. They just don't favor uh, those teams that are outside of the Power Five very much because Indiana State was, is a, a quality tournament team. They should have been in. Uh, John Blackwell's defense will help Wisconsin over Houston along with Storr. If they match up, that'll be a heck of a game. But guys, have you seen Houston play? Houston is a different animal, guys. They they play hard. They play harder than anybody in the country all the time. Iowa State is a close second. Houston plays hard. And I don't know. I don't I don't know that any Big Ten team has seen that kind of pressure that Houston can apply on you. They, they, ooh, they get after you. So maybe, but if I'm a betting man, I don't I don't bet Wisconsin over Houston. I, I don't like that matchup for them. Okay. Um Kalen Credo thinks uh uh, JMU gets the win. They, they, look, James Madison is a beast now. They, they are tough. But Wisconsin's playing their best basketball. And again, I like the front line of, of uh, Crowell and Tyler Wall to go at uh, Bickerstaff because he's really the only big that they have with some girth and size. Uh, they're, they're playing a 6'6 guy, power forward. Uh, and I think on the off the bench, they come 6'7". So I think Crowell and Wall may have an advantage there. What Big Ten teams get to the Final Four? Purdue. I don't have Kansas winning their first game either. I've got them being upset uh, in their first game by Samford. Um, Akron, Akron shouldn't even be in the – they shouldn't even be in the tournament. The, the kid at Kent State needs to be on suicide watch. If you guys don't, haven't seen it, go back and watch this. Kent State hits free throws. They're up one with, I believe it was 15 seconds left. There's a guard at Kent State that didn't understand. He thought they were down one. So Akron inbounds the basketball as they're advanced. This kid reaches out and fouls, like an intentional foul. Since, since the Akron player to the line, he hits two free throws, um, Kent State tries to come down and get a last second shot. They miss, and it's over. So Akron shouldn't even be in the tournament. Um, let me see where they are. Let's see where Akron is. Now they did they did do work in their in their in their conference. They they were uh, consistently good in the MAC. Uh, I don't see them yet. Let's see where is Akron. Oh, Akron versus um, Creighton. Creighton's got – Baylor Shireman is a pro. Trey Alexander is a first-round draft pick. Um, 
Ryan Kochbrenner is the two or three time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Stephen Ashworth can stretch the floor. Now they're not Creighton is not deep. They don't go deep, but that their top seven. They can score with anybody in the country. And Ryan Kochbrenner is one of the best defensive players in the country. So they've got a little bit of everything. That's a tough matchup for Akron. I like Creighton in that one. Iowa State, my choice also. They gave Houston the business. Yes, they did. Another person has Iowa State in the Final Four. Arizona winning it all. Arizona's been woefully inconsistent, in my opinion. Um, I've got Arizona going out in the... Where is my thing? I've got Arizona. I've got Arizona um, losing to Baylor in the, what would that be? The Sweet 16? Yeah. I've got Arizona getting to the Sweet 16, but I got them losing to number three Baylor. I don't, I don't like, I think they've been inconsistent and they don't, they don't defend very well, in my opinion. Uh, Take away your announcer's hat. You just steam bar at home. Who do you think is going to win it all? Purdue. I think big. I think Purdue's going to get the Big Ten their first championship. I, I like Purdue. I like the. I like the matchups. I like the fact that once Purdue gets past where, let's see. Once Purdue gets past that first round matchup, they have they have the winner of Grambling, and I think Middle or Montana State, they got the winner of Grambling and Montana State. They get that monkey off their back. They Then I, I have them playing a very good TCU team that I have TCU slight upset over Utah State. Once Purdue can get past, they can get to the second weekend, I have them beating McNeese State. Now, McNeese State has the kind of guards that can give Purdue problems. But I think Lance Jones is the difference, and I believe that the experience that um, Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith received last year and all this season, I think will benefit them come turning time. Plus, Miles Colvin got quality minutes in the Big Ten tournament. He will be utilized in that game because his quickness and athleticism will be needed against McNeese State. And once Purdue beats McNeese State, I don't care who they play after that. I got them playing Tennessee in the Elite Eight and then Marquette in the Final Four, Iowa State in the championship. I think they win those games. So I like Purdue to get they, – they got a favorable draw. I like their draw. They um, – I don't think Purdue and Marquette played this year. They played last year. Maybe they did play this year. Hold on. Let's see. Um, yeah, uh, Purdue beat Marquette on a n- neutral floor. They beat Tennessee. Um, as well. So all these teams that I, that are in the same bracket that I have Purdue going up against, they've already beaten them. They beaten Tennessee once they beaten Marquette. They haven't played Iowa state, but you get to the championship game. I like Purdue in that. I, I like Purdue in that one. Uh, sounds like uh, Drake Gibbs Lawhorn going to have to get us past Iowa state handling the basketball. Good luck with that because Moretti and Dragibbs Lawhorn, they have not seen pressure that Iowa State's going to apply. Haven't seen it. Can't wait for North Carolina to meet up with Arizona. That will be fun. Uh, I got I got, uh, I got North Carolina coming out. I'll, I'm going to show you guys my bracket here in a second. I got North Carolina coming out of their region. Uh, but again, I got Baylor beating Arizona in the Sweet 16. I, that team has not been consistent enough for me. Um, what's up, Chad? All one thing I noticed watching the teams Illinois play: the other teams' guards got much closer to the screener. We don't drive to the screen as close, allowing them to not have to go around. Oh, I see. Um, so that's a subtle and interesting thing that you notice, Chad. Um, Illinois doesn't, they set screens to get a favorable matchup. They don't necessarily set screens to get downhill. They kind of set a screen to try to get the matchup, the, the defender that they want to get on the offensive player with the ball. 
they don't set screens like their lives depend on. So I, that's a, a nice thing that you noticed. Um, and I think that's, that's why you see that. Um, Akron and Dayton come out of the first round. I've got Dayton winning their first round matchup. Dayton beating Nevada, a very good Nevada team, by the way. Uh, and I've got Dayton losing to Arizona in the second round. Um, you've got Akron coming out. People like Akron. I and I, I don't I don't dislike Akron. They're not going to beat Creighton, in my opinion. Curtis Dietz, not a bad choice at all. Not a bad choice at all. If we're to look at North Carolina again, I've got them in the in the final four against Iowa State. I just don't think they can deal with that physicality and pressure defensively that Iowa State would, is going to put on them. I don't think really anybody's ready for it except for Purdue, to be honest. Watch out for Oakland. Oakland is a talented ball club, and they play Greg Campy in his 40th season, ladies and gentlemen, 40 seasons at, at Oakland University. Gets to the tournament. He's got a talented team. They're very good offensively, uh, and they play this this kind of matchup zone that really throws teams. So, um, Oakland is a is is a scary team. Let's see who Oakland plays in the first round. Um, Oakland has Kentucky. Kentucky's a juggernaut. Now it's going to be a close game because they're going to give the young Kentucky uh, guards things to think about. But I think Kentucky's too talented offensively. I like the the Wildcats in that one. Hey, Wes K, um, they got an impossible job, Wes. I think they they did pretty well. Obviously, St. John's, I wasn't mad that St. John's didn't get in because I'm not a, a Rick Patino fan, so I was happy that they didn't get in. Um, but I didn't like the fact that Indiana State didn't get in. I didn't like that. Um, Providence probably could have gotten some, you know, a little bit more love. They didn't get in. But outside of that, I'm okay. I think that the, the I think they did a good job. The seating, I mean, if UConn is the over one number all seed, number one overall seed, bro, they threw FAU, Northwestern, San Diego State, Auburn. They threw Auburn in the Auburn, one of the hottest. Auburn is probably the best four seed in the in the tournament. BYU at a six seed, Illinois at a three seed. And Iowa State at a two seed, that's that's uh, murderer's row right there. I, th- I thought as a for the number one overall seed to get the toughest region, I mean, I know that they're going to be – let's see where they're going to be. Uh, wait a minute. I closed out that one bracket. No, I didn't. All right. So where is this first round? Okay, so UConn goes to Brooklyn. Then they get, if they get to the Sweet 16, they go to Boston. Uh, so they, they're going to stay out east, but woo. And they'll, their, their fans will show up, but man, did they get a tough draw. Uh, so, I, you know, outside of that, I think they did pretty good. Um, let's see. Uh, one top three seed loses in the first round just as much as it doesn't happen. Which top three seed do you think is most likely to get upset in the first round? Really want ISU, but ain't happening. ISU, ISU is good. Well, ISU, if you're talking about Iowa State, they're number two seed. They're not a three. So uh, uh, Kentucky, let's see, Kentucky, Illinois, Baylor, and Creighton. So I, if, if that is the case that a number three seed loses uh, all, uh, often, I can see why people would pick Creighton because they've got an, a pretty good Akron team. Uh, Baylor, I don't think is going to lose to Colgate. I think they're just too uh, athletic for Colgate. Um, Illinois, obviously, we talked about Moorhead State. I, I like Illinois in that matchup. And I, th- I just think Kent- <sighs> Kentucky's young, but Kentucky has that firepower. I don't think that they'll lose to Oakland. I don't. I just think they're too talented. Um, okay, Simeon Fuller likes Illinois over Iowa State. I hope you're right. 
I really hope you're right. Um, yeah, but yeah, Illinois is going to get to the second weekend. They're just going to face a juggernaut in Iowa State. Um, I think they will soon, Curtis, if they haven't already. Um, I'll try to keep a lookout and see if uh, I can post it when I find it. Um, thank you, Alan. Yeah, I, I enjoy calling them. I try to be objective, um, but I, I enjoy calling the Illini because they're a good team to co cover. I, I, they're fun to watch and fun to cover. Um, Kyrie, I got North Carolina going to the Final Four. I just, I just don't think that they can match up with Iowa State very well. I think Iowa State is. I, I got you know. So North Carolina got them in the Final Four. I just don't think they can beat Iowa State. Um, Carol Polpaquet says she's picking Purdue to win it all. Um, they'll be hungry and they'll be fresher, Carol. That's the one thing I worry about Illinois. Um, Illinois and Wisconsin, for that matter. Can they? Well, maybe not Wisconsin so much because I believe Wisconsin may have gotten the – yeah, they got a Friday, Sunday, so they get an extra day of rest. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about that. Plus, I want the Big Ten to win it. Yeah, right. I, I feel you on that, Carol. Uh, that's that's right, Chad. Ever since he's had the issue, he, they're not allowing any uh, media access to him. Um, it would have been nice to hear his thoughts on that, but he's letting his play do all the talking. Yeah, BYU is good, Ryan. That, I'm not. I'm not – I don't take anything away from BYU. I just don't think that they can defensively. I, I don't think they have enough to slow Illinois down. <laughs> like it, like it is 2023. Illinois versus Purdue in the championship. Illini went on the last second putback by Ty Rogers, Sean Higgins style, our turn this year. I hear you. I hear you, but let's see. So you got Illinois beating Iowa State. And then you got Illinois beating UConn. I don't know. That's tough. What's up, Oscar Sullivan? Thanks for tuning in. Marcus Howard, I've got Iowa State, North Carolina, Purdue, and Marquette in my final four with Iowa State and Purdue playing in the national championship game and Purdue winning it all. Um, man, Oscar Sullivan. I was shocked. And personally, I think Chris Holman panicked a little bit because Jake Dealer did so well at Ohio State that he is, is now the head coach uh, at Ohio State. And I think he, I don't know. I was shocked that DePaul could get Chris Holman. Chris Holman is a heck of a coach. And he's got Big East experience and ties. He did very well at Butler. So I get the comfort level. Um, I didn't know that DePaul had the bag and the NIL bag that would attract a guy like Chris Holtman because you're going to need to be much better on the facilities. You're going to be, you're going to have to pay him 3 million uh, north of 3 million. Your NIL is going to have to get up into the uh, million dollar range, in my opinion, if not more uh, to be competitive in the big East and to get a return on their investment and with investment investing in Chris Holtman, but he is a hell of a coach. And that was a great get for DePaul. So I'm very, very excited for them no question about it i agree with you dick no question about it oh luke taylor ha likes morehead state to pull off the upset okay i mean strange things have happened ryan how do you feel about creighton i like them um i saw creighton play marquette at home minus tyler uh colic their uh marquette starting point guard and Marquette gave him fits. Uh, Marquette, now I got him going to the Final Four, but they didn't have the, the best point guard in the country playing that day. And they still gave Creighton fits on Creighton's home floor on senior day. So I saw kind of some holes in what they were doing. Um, if Creighton were to get to the lead eight, they would have to go through. Creighton would beat Akron first round. Then I have... Uh, I've got Oregon upsetting South Carolina in the first round. So Creighton would have to get past Oregon in the second round. And then Creighton would have to beat Tennessee in the elite eight. I don't see that happening. 
I think Tennessee's too talented for them. But they they're certainly got the offensive firepower to get to the lead eight. Um, TJ rolling like a freight train down to the hoop, putting all that on tape. I just hope he doesn't get in foul trouble. Yeah, because, you know, teams are going to try to slow him down, but we'll see what happens. Yes, Ty was a beast. I agree. Carol Pope, Poquette's Final Four. UConn, Arizona, Marquette, Purdue. Championship game, I have Purdue over UConn as national champions. That's a pretty good Final Four. So you've got, you've got a number one overall seed, a number two, uh, over, two seed in Arizona, Marquette a number two, Purdue a number one. Okay, I like that. Purdue's non-con was better than uh, Michigan State's. Let's see. Purdue played Sanford tournament team. Ooh. Whoever said this is probably right as I'm looking at it. Yeah, Purdue might have the best, toughest schedule in the country. Sanford tournament team. Moorhead State tournament team. They beat a, a good Xavier team. Gonzaga. Tournament team, Tennessee, tournament team, Marquette, tournament team, Alabama, tournament team, Arizona, tournament team. Woo. I hey. I think you're right, Mr. Steelwagon. If Illinois gets to the Elite Eight and gets UConn, how do you think we match up? Not good. Donovan Klingon would be a problem on the interior for the Illini. Coleman Hawkins, um, Trying to guard him one on one, and just the 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 big quick guards in uh, Tristan Newton and Stephen Castle, Cam um, Spencer, sp- spacing the floor from the three. UConn may have a little bit too much, in my opinion, if Illinois were to, to match up with them. That's just me, but I don't have UConn. I got UConn getting upset. No, I got UConn getting to the lead eight. <clears throat> but I don't like them uh, against Iowa State. They threw the formula out the window. Plenty of good net teams get snubbed and under Um, Hey, Dory, good to see you. Hope that Illinois can continue to keep TJ Shielder from the press. I don't think there's – they won't have a problem with that, Dory, because it, if it's a team-issued mandate, the NCAA can't do anything about that, I don't think. And it, I think people are sensitive to the situation. And I don't, I like it what Illinois is doing because, you know, the, I'm in the media, the media is the media's crafty. So he doesn't need to be answering anything about his situation. So I think they'll be okay. We will need danger if we play BYU. They have a wide big on their team. Okay. And and BYU is extremely talented, guys. Uh, James Mass is getting a lot of nods over Badgers. What are your thoughts, Illini all the way? I don't have the Illini all the way. I have them in the Sweet 16. I have the Badgers in the Sweet 16. I like the Badgers to beat James Madison. It's going to be a tough game, but I like the Badgers. Carol, you and I think alike on that one. Chad, yes. And I like Iowa State if they were to match up. Uh, Oscar, I got Purdue winning the national championship. I've got uh, Wisconsin and Illinois advancing to the Sweet 16 based on the on the uh, on their draw and their seeds. So you're talking two Big Ten teams in the Sweet 16, three Big Ten teams in the Sweet 16, and Purdue to cut down the Nets as national champion. So I think the Big Ten will be better this year uh, than in years past. Okay, Captain Fletcher has Arizona as a national champion. I get it because they they're they're lip they you'll lick your lips when you're looking at them because they're tantalizing, but they're woefully inconsistent. And I, I I don't know. I just maybe they rally and 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 start playing their best basketball of the season. But let me let me go and look at uh Arizona real, really quickly. All right. So they they lost to Oregon in the conference tournament semis. They lost to USC in the last game of the regular season. They lost at home to Washington State, which that's a tourney team. They lost to Oregon State on the road. They lost to Washington. They lost to Washington State twice. 
They lost to Stanford on the road. They lost to Florida Atlantic in two overtimes, which is a heck of a game. And they lost to Purdue um, in Indianapolis. So they're, they're, they're a high-powered offensive team. And so I like their offense, but defensively is where they get sideways sometimes. And I, I, I don't know if uh, – I, I, don't, I don't like them to advance that far. Omaha has a, has a market area that's downtown that's got a ton of restaurants in it. Then you can go to West Omaha where they, they got all kind of – Omaha is a, a, a sleeper market, ladies and gentlemen. That's a big – Omaha is a much bigger city than people think. And there's a, there's a ton of places to go. Uh, great food. It's a great food city. Um, so you, you're going to have a lot of choices in Omaha. You're not going to see me at a lot of places. Um, because I, you know, I, I tend to go to my, my go-tos, but if you are, if you're in the center of Omaha and you spin around, close your eyes, you open up and go that direction, you'll run into a good restaurant. Trust me. Um, it was an, it was a calf injury. Uh, Carl, it wasn't serious. I think he'll be fine. Um, Wisconsin played their, with their hair on fire. And guys, remember, Purdue, it, Purdue's getting everyone's best shot. Every game this season, they got everyone's best shot. That's hard to do. So now you can breathe. You can take your, you take it, take a step back. They didn't wear themselves out in the Big Ten tournament, right? They played two games. That was it. And so now they can rest. They can they can get ready, and I think they're going to be I think they're going to be great. Um, Terrence finished one point behind him. Keegan Murray set the record uh, that Iowa played four games. TJ scored so many in three games. Legend, yes, it's a, it was a legendary performance. There's no doubt. Darren says I read a story that BYU got moved off the five line. And the first fifth at that, because they can't play on Sunday and other rules moved into a six. Seems like we got that misseated team lately. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 a very good team, very quality team, but you know, you got to beat good teams to the advance. It is what it is. Uh <laughs> yeah, you're right. They they did, they almost did. Ryan, the reason teams are turning down the NIT is because they got to get in the transfer portal. That opened up today. And so um, if you're playing in the NIT, you can't you can't give your focus to trying to acquire players that you want to bring in for next season. That's the only reason that, that teams are turning down the NIT. It's not that they're trying to snub that tournament necessarily. They're trying to get a head start on the tournament teams that are in the tournament that have to split their time between, between trying to work the portal and trying to get their teams ready to, to hopefully win a national championship. And so that's why if these major programs aren't in the tur- NCAA tournament, they're not going. Some of them are not going because they want to get a jump on the portal. That's it. That's the only reason. Oh, Carl. Th- yeah, they're, they're vulnerable, but not in the first and second round, not in the sweet 16. Um, they're vulnerable, but I don't see, I don't see Longwood. I don't see Nebraska, nor do I see Wisconsin beating uh Houston. Um okay. Blake says I love Coach Kareem's comments on teams dis- declining NIT bids. What are your thoughts on teams declining to play to focus on? Hey, I I'm with the teams. They you know if they don't win next year they're not they won't have a job. So this year if you don't get to the tournament a lot of teams are like, you know what? We didn't get to the tournament, so we got to focus on getting a roster that can get us to the NCAA tournament next year instead of playing in IT. I get it. I don't necessarily like it, but I understand it. It's it's the portal and NIL have affected the NIT in this way. I didn't see it coming, but I understand it. Um Go back and watch that because I almost cried for that kid. I really did. I got emotional. And I hope that they're surrounding him because he's going to get some stupid fans that are going to say some really cruel things to him. And people, hopefully, you know, these young people are going to be on social media. He's going to, I hope he turns his phone off because he's, he's going to get, it's, it's not going to be pretty. 
go back and watch it. And if, if, if you have it in your heart, ladies and gentlemen, send that young man a DM of encouragement, send him a direct message of encouragement because he's going to need it. Cause those are the type of things, heaven forbid, he's a young person uh, that will forever be remembered for that play. That's going to be, that's going to be tough for him moving forward. So, Pray for that young man. If you are of the mindset that prayer helps, which I am, pray for that young man because he needs every little bit that you can give him. Um, okay, Denise has the line I get to the lead eight. Chad, this is why somebody told me to put this in a, uh, to frame this. The reason I don't frame this, ladies and gentlemen, because I take this on uh, motivation, like motivational speaking appearances, and I put this on to show people that I can still fit my college jersey. So, yes, I can still. So, thank you, Chad. I can't. I'm actually lighter. I'm I'm one. I I, I averaged one ninety seven right now, and I played at about two oh five. So I'm lighter than I was at, in college. I know that's hard for people to believe, but it, it's it's diet working out and mainly DNA from Lana and Harold Bardo that I just try not to screw up. Um, Adam, I don't think if you don't, the seedings don't matter anymore. Once you get in the tournament and you know who you're going to play, none of that stuff matters. You just, you're just looking at the opponent ahead of you. You're not even paying attention down the line. You're, you're, you're winning in advance. That's it. So there's, there's no more pressure on UConn than there is on a 16 seed. You just have to be in a tournament. You're trying to win that particular game and move forward. So I don't think teams look at it th that way. I just think it's it's winning, winning in advance. That's it. I think because they are concerned about that, that legal situation. That, I think that's why he is not on draft boards right now. NBA teams want to see how this shakes out because – you know, NBA teams like everybody else, if they're going to make an investment, they don't want their fan base picketing games and things of that nature or being upset. So I think that's why you haven't seen his name pop up, but he's definitely playing like a first rounder, if not a lottery pick. So we'll see what happens, but I think that's what, that's what you're seeing. New Mexico is good. They're very good. Um, Jamal Mashburn Jr. is playing some of his best basketball right now. Uh, Eddie House's son is balling, can score just like his daddy. Um, they're good. And they won the uh, Mountain West tournament, which was one of the most competitive tournaments in, in the country because they got, six they got six teams in. Mountain West Conference got six teams in the tournament. And if you come out of that, uh, the number one team, that's saying something. Where the heck are uh, New Mexico? Oh, they're 11 seed. I got them beating the number six seed Clemson. I got them upsetting Clemson. But then I got Baylor beating New Mexico in the second round. But New Mexico is very good. Barbara, thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Um... <laughs> Spoke like a true Illini uh, fan right here. Oh, my goodness. Um, let's see. What problem do you have with Rick Pitino? How long you got? You remember what he did? You remember what he did to, uh, his grad assistant coach McGee? Do you remember that? McGee was a fall guy for the Louisville program, getting prostitutes for potential, uh, uh, recruits for, so Louisville was setting up prostitutes for recruits that were coming to visit Louisville. And the grad assistant gets fired and takes the heat for that. The grad assistant has money to pay for prostitutes to come in for the recruits. And Rick Pitino didn't know anything about that. Yeah. Right. Um, remember the incident with the woman in the, in the uh, restaurant? I won't go into details, but look it up. Uh, woman, I think the lady was trying to extort him or something, but um, if you read the reports on that, look it up. Um, I've had some personal interactions with him that 
you know, he's just not one of my favorite people. So that's why I don't like him. Um, Illinois offense may overpower Iowa State defense. It, it maybe I don't think so, but maybe we'll see. Uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, Iowa State is coming out of the, the most competitive conference in the country, the Big Twelve. There's another. There's a one seed that they beat twice. I think didn't they beat Houston twice? If I'm not mistaken, let's see here. Uh, yes, they beat, they beat Houston at home 57, 53. They lost to Houston on the road, 73, 65. Then they beat them 69, 41 in the, in the, uh, conference tournament. They played a number one seed three times. Okay. Uh, this is a team that is rugged. Now they struggle to score sometimes, uh, but you know, the line eye defense is not, nearly as good as Iowa State's defense. So we'll see. It could happen. Uh, oh, I'm glad you said that, Embrots. I'm That's why I bring it to you. So you guys are knowledgeable. You've got some information, and it might help your brackets. Uh, do you think that Paul ever considered D. Brown for head coach? No. No, they had to, they had to make a big-time splash – on that hire. Not that D wouldn't have made a, a, a little bit of a splash, but I think they wanted someone that has more head coaching experience at the D one level, but D is doing a great job. They won their conference. And I believe he got coach of the year in their conference uh, with Roosevelt university. Uh, Simeon, um, DePaul couldn't have hired Jawan. I don't know that anybody was going to hire Jawan right off the bat, the way that things ended at Michigan. Um, So, yeah, I mean, he got fired after DePaul hired, but I don't think he would ever have been in the mix. DePaul had to to have a certain makeup of a coach. And I think they, I, I think they, I think they got better than I anticipated. Frankly, I think they knocked it out of the park. Chris Holtman's a hell of a coach. That's a great hire. Um, oh, great point, Jay. Um, Jay Beck or Boke, if I can say this right. All right. I, I should have put this in the things, but I'm going to just read this out to you. One, two, three. The last six Big Ten tournament champions, this is what's happened. Purdue lost in the first round, 2023. 2022, Iowa wins the Big Ten tournament, loses in the first round to number five seed Richmond. No, Iowa's number, uh, Iowa was a five seed. They lost to Richmond. 2021, Illinois, number one seed, losing the second round to Loyola. 2019, Michigan State lost to Texas Tech in the final four. 2018, Michigan lost the national title game to Villanova. And 2017, Michigan uh, got to the Sweet 16 and lost to Oregon. So, especially in the last three years, or I'm sorry, the last three Big Ten tournament title winners have not fared well in the, in the, in the, the big dance. And so hopefully Illinois can overcome that. I like their matchup against Moorhead State. That's going to be the telling sign because then they'll get another day of rest and then they can play the second round matchup. How they look coming out against uh, Moorhead State will be key. If they can get through that game, I think that they can get the proper rest that they'll need the next day. They play in, they play their second round matchup, who would be against um, BYU, and I think they'll be okay, right? And then they've got that time to rest for the second weekend. So I'm, I was a little concerned about that. That's why I looked it up, and that's why I wanted to give you guys the results. I should have put it in the uh, in the thing here, and I forgot to do that. But thank you for for asking that. I I, I needed to uh, get that. Mm. Let's see, Alana. Uh, does the committee not take Ken Palm or Net in their decision? The Net is everything. That's how they determine who gets what seed and who who they put against who. It isn't it wild to have Ken Palm number one, number one, two, three, and four seed in one division in the East? Yeah, it 
They got a heck, they got a heck of a draw. Um, well, Michael Walton, I, I've been saying it all year, but they've been overcoming it. So we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see how far they can advance without one. Uh, my sleeper team, I don't necessarily have a sleeper team. Uh, maybe a team, uh, a lower seed to watch out for is McNeese State. I wish Sanford was in another region because I like them as well, but they're going to meet up in the second round in, in my bracket. Mm, there's another one that Drake would have been a nice pick, but they're not going to get past Iowa State in the second round. Um, New Mexico seems to be a popular uh, seed, higher seed, and Akron uh, seems to be a, a popular pick as well. Wow, you guys are you guys are humping today, boy. Let's see. Let me get somebody I haven't picked on yet. Mr. Atlanta, how far do you have the fighting line going? Sweet 16. Uh, of the three, eight, nine seeds, Michigan State, Northwestern, Nebraska, which one has the best chance to upset a number one seed in the second round? None of them. I don't like those matchups. You know, I, I, I talked about North Carolina and Michigan State. I don't like that matchup for Michigan State. I, d I definitely don't like UConn for Northwestern. And what was the other one you said? Uh, Nebraska and Houston? Mm -mm. So I, I don't think any of them have the best chance for an upset because I don't like any of I don't like any of those matchups for those teams. But if I were to have to pick, maybe Nebraska because Houston's a little banged up. Maybe, but. The way they defend, mm. yeah, and I, I'll say <laughs> I'll say none of them. Um, Boo can definitely get uh, Northwestern uh, to Sunday. They won't get further further than that, but he can he can get them to Sunday now. That's what, that's what that's what I have down. Shout out to Connor Clark, who did an excellent job as one of the student reporters for Bardo's Breakdown this year. He was outstanding covering Nebraska with in-depth knowledge. He, he did shows. He did posts. He was excellent. You all, please show your appreciation for Connor Clark. I thought he did a great, great job among some of the other reporters that we had. <laughs> good news. BYU doesn't have any vodka drinkers. We should be good. I love it. Check it out, Seven. Oh, that's funny. That's a good one. M. Brotts, yes. Connor Clark did. He did an excellent job. Um, uh, Carol, Westwood One is pretty easy to find. Just look up Westwood One Radio Network, and you'll, you'll find it. It's very, very easy uh, to find. Okay. I think that's it, guys. Um, I hope I gave you – oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Let me share my screen. Which one am I sharing? Is it the? Yeah, okay. It'll be the CBS Interactive Bracket. CBS, CBS. Yep. Okay. Let's see if I can pull this up and make this bigger. Can you can you all see that enough? Hopefully, I hope you can. Shoot. Um. Because I don't know how to make this any bigger. So this is my bracket. You see, I've got UConn, Iowa State coming out of that region. Houston, Marquette coming out of this uh, meeting in the regional final. UConn, Iowa State out of the east. Houston, Marquette out of the south. I've got North Carolina and Baylor in the west. And Purdue and T Tennessee in the east, uh, in the midwest. I've got Marquette and Purdue in a final four matchup. Iowa State and North Carolina in another final four matchup. I've got Iowa State and Purdue advancing to the national championship and I've got Purdue Boilermakers your national champion. So, I hope that helps. Hope you guys saw what you needed to see. If you have any questions come back to the post post and I'll look 
And I'll try to answer your questions as quickly as possible. Best time of year, y'all. Hopefully next Monday, I'll be talking about Big Ten teams advancing. And I'll give you um, a uh, Sweet 16 Elite Eight um, kind of preview to help you look and see and give you the, the opponents that Big Ten teams will be playing. So thanks for tuning in. Love you all. Best time of year, March Madness. Until next time, y'all, holla!